joining you for this assembly has uh, really been an inspiring opportunity and, and a wonderful experience, a chance to learn from all of you as I begin my tenure as your new executive director. It is my dream to have a long and fruitful partnership with all of you. Dreams and transitions have been the themes of this assembly, as well as the biennial of URJ congregations of which we are also a part. Together we have been celebrating the past, launching our centennial celebration, celebrating Rabbi Yaffe's tenure as our president, and celebrating the RAC's 50th anniversary, and so much more. Even as we begin to envision and contemplate our future with new leadership, new programs, and new challenges. As we have heard throughout these past few days together, transitions can be incredibly energizing and exciting, and they provide opportunities for us to dream big. But transitions can also be a little scary. There's always a temptation to rely on what we know and what is comfortable for us from the past. There is an element of risk that comes with change, but there is also an element of risk that comes with standing still. That tension is always upon us as we celebrate the past and turn our sights to planning for the future. In our Torah study sessions this week, we've heard much about Joseph, the dreamer and the dream interpreter of this week's parasha, Vayeshev. He dreams his way into slavery, he interprets his way out of prison, and he plans his way into the highest echelons of Egyptian elite. Today, however, we mark a transition to the next parasha, Miketz. As Joseph confronts his past, he meets his brothers once again, and together they link their futures in the new land of Egypt, presumably a land that would be one of safety. But soon we will learn that a new pharaoh will arise, and all of us know what happens next. So, so it has always been in our history. Circumstances change, we move, we relocate, and we continually reinvent our communities and our institutions to respond to the changing realities that we face. The Jacobs and the Josephs of every generation and their unnamed wives and daughters envisioned the communal structures that would help shape Jewish life to meet their needs. From the wilderness tabernacle to the temple in Jerusalem, from the Sanhedrin to large suburban congregations, from classical reform Judaism to our return to Torah at the center, each generation has designed or redesigned the Jewish institutions that served their community best. Well, as we have heard over and over again, we know that we are once again in a period of transition. Jewish life is changing as the world around us changes. We know that we are on the cusp of another major shift in North American Jewish life but no one really knows exactly where it's all heading. So you should know that whatever challenges your sisterhood faces, you are not alone. All across North America, women's groups, congregations, and Jewish institutions are struggling to figure out how to remain relevant in a changing world. Armed with knowledge of our history and inspired by the wonderful messages that we have been hearing this week, all of us will soon, very soon, return to our various sisterhoods. We will face our realities and as we always do, we will roll up our sleeves and we will get to work. And we have a lot of thinking to do together if we're going to get this right. So I want you all to look around you. All of you are the leaders who will shape the course of our future. But now I'd like you to look at the empty spaces between us. Who is not here with us today? And why are they not here? And when our children and our grandchildren have the opportunity to join us, will they? The challenges we face are the same as those faced by our congregations, and I expect that that is exactly what Rabbi Jacobs is speaking about right down the hall right now. First and perhaps most immediate, our Recent economic downturn has made us brutally aware that dues and fees alone will no longer sustain our growing programs. We need to develop new business models 
and identify new funding streams, including bequests and major gifts and planned giving to supplement membership dues if we are to survive. WRJ has the potential and we can be at the very center of cultivating women's philanthropy at a time when women control a greater proportion of wealth than at any time in our history. Second, we are only beginning to imagine the impact of new technology on Jewish life. Not so long ago, having a website was considered cutting edge, but now everyone has a website, it's the norm, and it's even somewhat passe. While many of us still rely on newsletters and emails, and I include myself in that, more and more communication takes place through Facebook, Twitter, and blogs. I don't know about you, but as soon as I seem to understand the next social media, it's already outdated. I'm told that most technology these days becomes outdated within 18 months. Staying relevant and keeping up with these changes, even as we continue to use the traditional and reliable communication tools with which most of us are comfortable, will be critical for us in the coming years. Technology leads me to the third factor that will define the future of Jewish life in North America, including our sisterhoods. Gen X, Gen Y, the millennials, whatever it is we are currently calling the next generation. They remain an open question. Who are they? What will be important to them? What aspects of Jewish life will they retain and what will they reject? Demographers are already speculating that as a group, today's young adults are not joiners. They define affiliation differently and they are likely to opt in and out of organized religious life without significant interest in denominational barriers. But I am convinced that while they may seek to create different institutional models than we currently have or than we know, their yearning for meaningful, educational and spiritual opportunities, their commitment to working for a better world, and their desire to bond with their sisters in accomplishing those endeavors will be just as strong as ours. So the real question will be whether or not Temple Sisterhoods and WRJ will be the places where they will feel empowered to create the networks and programs that will be meaningful for them. Identifying what it will take to inspire and connect with younger women is perhaps the most critical challenge facing our sisterhoods. We will need to be nimble and flexible enough, flexible, <laughs> to respond to their interests and their needs. And we will need to be courageous in piloting new models without any guarantee of what will and will not work. Just as in the past, our predecessors reinvented themselves as necessary to meet the needs of their members. Together, I'm confident that we will be able to take the bold steps necessary to meet today's changing demands. And indeed, our future will depend upon it. All that being said, even as we devote proper uh, attention to anticipating the needs of the millennials, we also need to attend to the needs and demands of the baby boomers. We cannot afford to ignore or neglect the core of our membership potential, those who are over 50 years young. They, or should I say we, are vibrant and engaged. We are seeking spiritual and educational outlets and we have more time and energy to devote to our spiritual lives than we did when we were younger. So younger women may determine what the future of Jewish life will look like, but those of us in this room will create the Jewish present for the women of Reformed Judaism, just as those before us created the foundation upon which we stand. Transitions can be daunting. It certainly will be for me and all of us in leadership, but they are also opportunities for creativity and innovation Personally, I find it incredibly exciting to think that we are in the process of creating the future. And ultimately, we have no choice. Change is taking place with or without us. Like Joseph and his brothers, even as we celebrate our past hundred years, we need to venture forward into the unknown and build for the future. 
having dreamed a little bit about the future, I hope you will indulge me for a few moments of personal privilege as I give a nod to the past. I owe a debt of gratitude to the many women who came before me and opened the doors that led me here today. I am grateful first for the sisterhood women who were my first role models for Jewish activism at a time when there were few women professionals within the Jewish community. They made it possible for me to travel to Israel as a teenager and made sure I had a solid religious school education as my foundation. I am grateful for the Sally Presands and the Nama Kelmans of the world who broke down the barriers to rabbinical school and law school and so many professions so that women in my generation could not only dream but actually pursue any career we could imagine. I am grateful for my predecessors at WRJ. I feel truly blessed to have known and worked with every one of the past directors of NFTS and now WRJ, and I have learned from each one of them. As I said to Dolores, having worked with Jane in my early career, I think she would have been very proud of me, and, and that just makes me feel. And, and I owe a, a debt of gratitude to the women of WRJ who were my first mentors. Uh, I don't know if Connie is still here, or Connie Crestual. Where is she? I don't Connie, who was president of WRJ when I got my start, and Judy Hertz, who sadly couldn't be here. Uh, of course, Dolores was very involved at the time as well. Um, they taught me the ropes, and they helped, truly helped launch my career within the reform movement. So thank you for that. And I am immensely grateful to Lynn and Blair and all the current leaders of WRJ who have shown confidence in me to be your next exec who will be my partners in this transition. And finally, I am grateful to all of you who have welcomed me so warmly into your midst. As Joseph and so many other leaders of Jewish life responded when called, I proudly join all of you in proclaiming, Hineni, here I am. Here we are ready to roll up our sleeves and work together so that we can continue this proud legacy of WRJ. I look forward to dreaming and planning for the future stronger together. Thank you.